and welcome to my cosy little corner of the internet. I'm Charlie the Vampiric Barbie, your host, and, and welcome, truly, truly welcome to the first ever video on this channel because I, I accidentally deleted the other one. Um, from here on out, this is going to be the home for all things girly and ghoulish. <coughs> Pin up palm already, coined the term pink and spooky, so girly and ghoulish is, is what we're left with. So, if you will, witches, vampires, werewolves, living, dead, undecided, mogwai that you cannot feed after midnight. Join me as we talk about the history of Morticia Adams. The angelic gloomy presence has been haunting our screens for just over half a century, 60 years to be exact, but the bewitching figure and her family have been cementing themselves in pop culture history for almost eight decades. Familiar with her or not, let me introduce you. Quiet, this is a very dramatic moment. She is the real head of the family. No voice, incisive and subtle, smiles at her, ruined me, you can tempt your celebrities, fierce family loyalty. Even in this position, we think we do sometimes that With her long black hair and juxtaposing soft and dark allure, for many, Morticia Adams is the ultimate spooky matriarch. A witch. I make natural soaps and candles and things. And an incurable romantic, Morticia, whichever her reincarnation, is always oozing with charisma. Deadpan, quick wit. What do you think that feels like? Mixed with gentle physicality, she's both poised and protective, making her not too short of perfection. And according to Wednesday, she has a talented affection for botany. Thank you for letting me know. Although, before becoming a plant-loving macabre icon of the silver screen, Morticia graced black and white paper before she was brought to life in glorious technicolor. Black is such a happy color. The Adams Family. Sorry. Originally debuted in The New Yorker in 1938 by artist and illustrator Charles Adams. The single panel standalone comic strips ran from their debut until Charles' death in 1988. And Morticia Adams was one of three speaking characters, alongside of course whom we now know as Gomez and Grandmama. However, we weren't on a first name basis with the family until 1964. Mother and daughter received their names with the releasing of a licensed doll collection in 1962, but it wouldn't be until the premiering of the TV show in 1964 that father and son would receive theirs. Set the scene. Bella Lugosi has been dead almost 10 years, and Elvis Presley is currently cheating on Priscilla with El Margaret in Viva Las Vegas. But not one, but two spooky families are premiering on American television a week apart to save humanity. The Adams Family and the Monsters. I think we should take Herman's advice. After all, he's always been the level-headed one of the family. Our unconventional queen had finally been given a name, or hell, Morticia Frump, every Friday at 8.30pm prime time. And of course, if you hadn't already guessed, the name is derivative from the word mortician. Such a lively profession. The first colourful portrayal, Carolyn Jones took the helm, and if I may, creating the blueprint for every actress after her. Uh, she's of course known for her roles in King Creole with Elvis Presley and House of Wax with Vincent Price. Ethereal, playful and delicate in temperament, Carolyn made the world fall in love with Charles's creations all over again. Nothing quite like a woman's touch. Delicious, isn't it? It's my husband's pièce de résistance, crème de la toadstool. And 11 years after two successful seasons had aired, Carolyn again would give her talents to the loving mother in vile vibrancy in 1977 in Halloween with the New Adams Family. In the 60s, audiences were warmly welcomed into the home of Halloween's poster children, but the family have shifted roles a little in the last 30 years or so. The 60s show featured Margaret Hamilton as Morticia's mother. A name may be familiar to you, she played the Wicked Witch of the West in the 1939 Wizard of Oz. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog too! Grandma Ma began as Morticia's mother-in-law, and Festa, one of Morticia's uncle, and Carolyn Jones also played the part of Morticia's twin sister, Ophelia Front. Of course, in 1991 reiteration, the family dynamic would change. Festo would become Gomez's long-lost brother and Grandma Ma Morticia's mother. The show was cancelled in 1966, alongside the monsters that same year. The 70s saw Janet Waldo lend her voice to the character in the family's first animated spin-off. And in the 1980s, the family laid low, already celebrating their status in pop culture history, hopefully taking a holiday in Salem to rest up for the 90s, which would bring us not one, but four versions of the dress-hugging witch. Let's see. 
1992, again, are doting off Beat Mother in animated form, but a year before the glorious Angelica Houston in 1991, and again in 1993 for the two beloved Adams Family movies, of course, directed by Barry Sonnenfeld. Ellie Harvey in 1998 in the new Adams Family TV show, and Daryl Hannah putting on the sultry gown in 1999 for the kooky but missable Adams Family reunion. Basically, piss and shit, so I'm just telling you. Angelica and her whimsical portrayal enchanted a whole generation, slightly more powerful in stature than Jones and with a Dracula-like intensity. Houston's matriarch is enigmatic, sweet, passionate and sultry. The 1990s was a great time for Angela Houston, probably the height of her career, as she finally pied off Jack Nicholson. Take caution in your tone, Commander. But it was some of the best performances of her career. The Witches, The Grifters, of course the two Adams Family movies and Manhattan Murder Mystery. Um, I just finished reading her memoir, it's fantastic, I, I really recommend it. Describe Jack Nicholson as a lover in three words. Um, what's that D thing? Dick. The Zany family then disappeared off of our screens until 2019, Charlie Theron now playing the beloved gothic icon in animated form. And of course 2021 we would see Catherine Zeta Jones take up the part in Netflix's Wednesday. Sultry, with a deeper voice, Catherine brings subtle, underlying, seductive magnetism. Her version of Morticia prickly and darker than any of her predecessors. There is no denying that Morticia is a forever Halloween icon and a muse. Thank you. She continues to captivate generations with her fashion choices and her unwavering devotion to her family and her lifestyle. And she will forever be the blueprint for people wishing to express eccentricity and individuality and for those of us that love to embrace the darker side of life and death. She truly is lawless. She evades beauty standards, archetypes, um, so much so that she created a lane entirely of her own, which blossomed entertainers like Elvira and Vampira. What's this address? Of course it's address. It certainly is, but where else? 5515 Melrose, why? That's not my house. It's interesting. And although once created by a man, Morticia, if she were a language, feels transcendent. I feel she speaks for generations of female yearning. Low-cut, figure-hugging, sexual attire, witchy, long dark hair, um, she's open and gently sexual, she's a, she's a loving mother but she manages to pursue her deepest darkest desires, all of the qualities that women are told not to possess, well at least not all at once. You simply cannot define her or put her in a box. Oh uh, what's in the box? Maybe a coffin but not any other box. Scary women are very few and far in between in modern media and although she may attest to some traditional gender roles her emotional intensity and defiance of what should be expected of it is truly remarkable. I don't necessarily think that Charles Adams knew what he had created or you know I don't think he knew the life of its own that the character would take on and truly the credit is due to the actresses that have embodied her over the years. Morticia has been brought to life through dialogue and imagination, through subtlety and exaggeration. Morticia is timeless because she is a vessel. She's been embodied by brilliant actresses almost every decade, which automatically gives you know, social commentary on the time that it's being portrayed in, as well as being fed by personal experiences of the actresses, um, as well as the character itself symbolising rebellion and pushing against the norm. For most of eternity, women have been fighting against the norm and probably will do for the rest of eternity. I think there's a really interesting conversation also to be had about the kind of direction of Morticia and, and where she's going to go because the weird kids and the outcasts are no longer the weird kids and the outcasts, you know, Wednesday is modern pop culture. Will Morticia remain the Queen of Halloween or will Vampira or Elvira or Lily Monster or, or someone new take up the title? And, you know, I group the four together because they're always on um, tote bags on Etsy. You know, I think it's a shame that um, Vampira has been kind of lost to history. Myla Nermi is, is a fantastic woman, very brash and abrasive in her physical appearance, you know, more so than what Morticia does, but it's just a shame because Morticia did it first. A vampire cocktail. You like it? It hates you. You know, in the 60s, the Monsters and the Addams Family were airing at the same time, but the Monsters always beat the Addams Family in ratings. 
but it's interesting that Morticia has taken on this status and Lily Monster hasn't so much. I'm just going to blatantly ignore Rob Zombie's um, reiteration of the monsters. <laughs> Lily Monster is everything to me. Alright, gay. That she isn't a vessel, she isn't moldable and she isn't open for interpretation. She is a Von de Carlo. And even visually, Morticia is just more. Um, Morticia visually is a rebellion, you know? And the Adams Family will continue to be staples in the world of Halloween and, and pop culture because they speak to people like you and me. They're the first and probably the last of their kind. Um, visually distinctive with abnormal tendencies and open to the imagination. Morticia Adams is, is my version of, of the Mona Lisa and she's, she's my version of Taylor's version. She'll always be my ideal of a modern woman. Who is your favourite Morticia? Leave it in the comments and I will see you in the next video.